Hey, everybody. Welcome to another Playful Humans podcast. I'm your host, Mike Montague, and my guest this week is Megan Miller. She's an intentional living expert. Ooh, we're going to find out what that means. You can find her at megan-miller.com or on her own podcast, Putting Attention to Intention. Uh, wherever you are listening or watching this podcast would be a good place to search for that. You can find Playful Humans at playfulhumans.com. That's not very hard. Uh, there's some cool sponsors, there's some quizzes and fun community at playfulhumans.com. If you're looking for more fun, flow and fulfillment in your life, you are in the right place. Here we go. All right, Megan, welcome to the podcast. We like to start with the joke of the week. The joke of the week is brought to you by bath towels. Bath towels are the leading cause of dry skin. I don't know if you knew that or not. Oh, I did uh, not know that. I did call, not know that. What do you call a psychic little person who has escaped from prison? Oh, what do you call a psychic little person? That's a small I medium at large. <laughs> Okay. I was watching Willow uh, the other day on Disney Plus, and I feel like uh, that one just spoke to me uh, this week. Do you have a joke for us? I do have a joke. This has been my, my go-to joke. I call it my friend maker, and I hope that everyone takes this nugget with them. What did one chip say to the other chip? It's a potato chip. Ooh, I don't know. Are you hers or are you free to lay? <laughs> all right i like it yeah, uh, dancing on a little raciness but yet still keeping yeah it a little but food light. jokes are always uh good yeah yeah always fair game okay now let's talk about intentional living and how you got here mm. um now i heard an interesting stat the other day that kids graduating from college now will have not on average nine different jobs in their life and seven of them have not been invented yet mm -hmm. uh so we're going to college we're spending hundreds of thousands of dollars to get degrees in things that we will not do for a living uh for seven out of nine of our our job i feel like intentional living expert is not something you wanted to be when you were in fifth grade uh, and, and picking your career paths. Uh, so how did you get here? Yeah. You know, that's such a, that is such a great question. Have you ever though stopped and given yourself the gift to pause and look back in your life and think this makes perfect sense. This makes perfect of sense course. that I end up up here, but I could not see it in the muck and the myrrh and the struggle to get here. You know, I'll, I'll talk to people, good friends. I just had dinner with a good friend the other night and I was just telling him about how this this journey and the courage to 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 build it and to share it and be so vulnerable in it, how it's like, it's terrifying. It's terrifying, yet exciting all at the same time. And he said to me, Meg, I, this was always meant for you. I can see it clear as day. But yet I never could. So so to answer your question, Mike, no, I never thought that I would be here teaching and gifting other high performers, the, the toolkit, the conversations, the community to put the mask down that we've been taught to hide behind, pause on this Herculean sprint on this ladder of success that we think happiness is on the other end of the thing, and really get to know the person that we've never been taught how to get to know ourselves. And the whole reason why I'm passionate about it is I was on a 15-year career uh, fast track to the corner office. And Mike, someone, it's so funny how like our childhood stories dictate everything we do, but we never deal with the shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with we, you. Right. We run from it at all costs. So for me, I never even dealt with it until I was 38 that I, I was raised by a single mother. I, you know, I had no father in my life. I was a C student, chubby kid from central PA less than a thousand SAT scores. I think it was like 600 and I lied about that for years. And the first thing that I was ever good at, I became addicted to. And that was this job in sales. And then it 
was like a drug. I, I was never enough. It squeezed the joy out of life. I was always on, you know, the hustle culture accolades. The achievement was how I felt like I was worthy and validated. And we don't talk about that enough in our world because we're culturalized to believe that it's the car, it's the size gene, it's the relationship, it's the square footage of your home, it's the title after your name that'll make you happy. So fast forward, I got the corner office. And with that, I had a breakdown. Breakdown alongside a major highway outside Philadelphia. And I thought to myself, how did I get here? I was popping Lexapro. Mike, I was binge drinking. I had vertigo. I was $20,000 in debt. I was cut off from all my closest friends and family. I was in loveless relationship after a loveless relationship. And it's at that point that I started to get to know myself, which is very difficult because we're never taught these things ever. The conversations mm -hmm. you have with yourself and, and flash forward seven years into this journey. Now I am out preaching these things that that I had to learn to take my life from existing to living. I think that is huge. And I am so glad that you're sharing your story. And I'm really excited to dig into all of that. But there's so much there to unpack. I'm going to start with a weird question, which is probably uh, the least personal part of it. But you mentioned the $20,000 in debt. And I was talking with another friend of mine this week that I feel like right now, especially with our economy, there's a lot of people feeling this as adults, especially the ones that are successful, because my 401k went down by 20%. Yeah. Prices went up by 20%. So I'm effectively like 40% behind where I was. And I made more money this year than I've ever made in any other year in the rest of my life. And I feel like I went backwards. And a, a friend of mine who's another high performer yesterday just said, like, I don't want to do more. I can't do more and end up further behind than I, I was. Like, this is clearly not sustainable. I'm going to have to change and do something different or measure something different because this isn't working. So I, I'm wondering for you specifically about money how did you or do you have any advice uh, of like people that make more money than they've ever had and still end up in debt uh, yeah. at, at the end of it? it? It seems like a weird thing in our culture. We don't talk about a lot. Yeah. And, you know, it's so interesting that you bring that up, Mike, because you go out to any restaurant, you go out anywhere. People are buying, 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 buying. And we're like, how do you afford this? And I know for the answer me, is they can't <laughs> ding, ding. 90, and, 95% of people can't. Yeah. Yeah. Living on credit card debt, but we never talk about it. You know, it's interesting. So the stories around money that we tell ourselves, and I learned this through watching my own mother, you know, and, and her stories around money, you, you inherit the stories around money that you were brought up and, and it's learned, it's learned yeah. behavior, but you never unpack that. So for me, we never really talked about money. I never really knew how to manage money. And because I felt like complete shit. Can I curse here, by the way? I'm on like my second oh, yeah, 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 good. Okay, good. Um, so for me, because I felt like complete shit, it was a masking tool. Like I thought I would be happy when I bought the handbag, when I bought the thing. So I would ask anyone who is struggling financially, when they go out to the dinner, do you really need the dinner when you're buying the extra thing on Amazon and you're throwing shit in your cart like I notoriously used to do? Do you really need it? So I started doing this thing. It sounds I'm, I'm all about these small micro steps because I think that's the biggest thing, like springing into action. We all have all this information, how we take our phones in the bathroom with us, but it's really springing into action. So for me, one of these small things that I started to do, which has been a complete game changer, even in my Amazon card, for instance, I will leave it in there for 24 hours. And I will think to myself, do I need this? And it's cut back yeah. drastic, drastically in this frivolous spend of shit that I didn't even realize that I was spending because it was just second nature to scroll on Amazon, put it in my cart, do the thing. So I would ask your listeners to pause and really think, 
why am I, why am I buying this and give them stuff? I, I love hours. that for two reasons. The first one is, and I use the wish list uh, a lot too. I just pop it on the wish list and be like, I don't need to buy this today, but I found something fun. You know, you get that dopamine hit of, I found something I, I want. But there's also a, a long-term thing about happiness that happens with vacations too, that it, it turns out as humans, we don't love vacation as much as we love looking forward to vacation, which is weird. And so it's actually better to have one vacation scheduled out a year from now that you don't even ever go on than to go on a vacation this week. You actually feel better and get more happiness per capita by looking forward to it. And so I think we get stuck in these instant gratification cycles where we're like, if I just buy this thing on Amazon, or if I just get these new shoes, I'm going to feel better. It's going to make me happy. But the opposite is actually true. If you don't buy the shoes, you make yourself more happy in the long term in the aggregate. And I think people mess up short term and long term all the time, which is why I brought up the money question, because I think it's a great way to kind of look at it objectively and keep score and be like, are you doing better for your future? Are you going to be better tomorrow than you are today with the habits you're using around money? But now we can ask that question about the other stuff and like substance abuse or even just the hustle culture is if you're working 60 hours a week, there's no way you're going to be better in better shape, better mental performance, better emotionally next week to do your job than you are this week. And same thing with drugs and and whether it's sleeping pills and then taking caffeine to wake up or alcohol or anything else uh even caffeine i put into that bucket at this point it's like mm -hmm. if i'm trying to artificially make myself more productive i gotta pay that cost at some point it's like putting it on credit card debt and with caffeine that comes out when you sleep you're stealing from your future night's sleep that energy you don't get free energy uh, from, from caffeine. So I'm wondering how you think about these things as well. I want to go back, Mike, to what you said, um, a bit ago, cause I just, I loved that when you were talking about your future self, mm. that is the person that we never take into consideration when making these decisions, right? Pouring the extra drink, eating for me, Oreos was a, a man. I could go through a sleeve of Oreos in a minute. And then I always felt like jack shit afterwards. To your point, the instant gratification and doing the things that you know you shouldn't do, but you do anyway because it's easy. Answer the emails in the middle of the night, stay in the relationship, overspend, blah, blah, blah. So I would ask your listeners, and this is something I've started to ask myself, and it's been a game changer. Before you do your th before you do the thing, think to yourself, what would my future self be proud of? I know it sounds hokey as all shit, but it works. It really works. So for me, back to the money piece, you know, when when my husband and I first got married, um, you know, I, I was in so much debt. I had a horrible credit score. I was just so used to overspending because it's what I did to fill the void. And when we first got married, it's hard to break those habits. And I was doing those things again, especially when I felt like an on shaky water when you feel like you're out to sea, man, and you have no anger, you go back to the old habits because it's comfortable, even if they don't serve you. So for me, it's always been overspending or eating booze, a little mixture of both. I got it all. But what has really helped is, well, one, pausing with the purchase, but two, asking myself, what would my future self want? So there was a time when I would overspend and then we would come to the month, the time of the month when we would do the credit cards. And I would cringe and I would hide because I was like, shit, I'm going to get in trouble. Michael's going to be so pissed because I knew I overspent and I just had this gnawing gut feeling. And what has since changed when I've been asking myself, what would my future self be proud of? Hitting the pause on the purchase. It has changed our relationship drastically because now I don't have that cringe in the month thinking, oh my God, am I going to get in trouble? So I, that, that, when you just talked about your future self, it just made me me uh, flash to my own journey of asking myself that question and how it's been a game changer. Well, I love that. And I think it goes back to uh, two things. I don't know whether I want to go forward or backwards. So I'll, I'll let you choose here. Mm -hmm. um, I love what you said about childhood stuff. And I think 
when I look back at me, I think the thing that you're most scared of as a child becomes your superpower as an adult. So mm. I felt like a nerd. I felt left out. And now I build communities of, of people. My day job is a, a community director. And with the Playful Humans podcast, I want to meet fun people that want to be a part of something and, and building a community here of adults that are happy and, and fun and inspiring for me. Um, but I think that also is that baggage is like your biggest fear, but your superpower is mixed in there. So I, you, you know, like you mentioned some of the stuff that I um, did the morning announcements in high school, I would do like, you know, the talent shows in middle school and stuff. And I just loved being on stage and doing it at every age of, of my life. And I think sometimes we get distracted by that and we think, okay, well, I'm really good at that. It's easy, but that's not a career. I can't get paid to be silly or or perform or be on a microphone. And that's something different. So when I think about looking forward and living with intention or designing the life that you want, I feel like that's the hard part. But sometimes dealing, if you had a bad childhood and stuff, I had a really great one. I was blessed. But getting over those things to even imagine a better future can be tough. Where do you think the hard part is where's the magic in in all of that 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 you found? Yeah, oh, I love I love that you said that about doing the morning class announcement. So for me, it was Mrs. Dobie's. Oh, I'll never forget it. I actually wrote her a letter a couple months ago, just telling her how much she changed changed my life. God bless teachers. I'll tell you, mm -hmm. it's a hard job. Who wants to do it in today's world? But what an impact you have. So third, just turned thirty nine, and I still reflect back to Mrs. Dobie's eighth grade creative writing class. Mike, it was the first class in my life that I ever felt home, that I ever felt like just this thrive. I couldn't wait to sit there and write and write and write. And as I and I, as life happens, as careers happen, as adulthood happens, all of that went to the back burner. And my life became the spreadsheets, the emails, the do and the thing, right? As it so quickly mm. does. And I had not written, I had not touched a book physically in years. And then this is one of the things I think that COVID is such a gift because we could not go anywhere because we could not be, dist well, you could be distracted by life, but because we were forced to face shit that we ran from for so long, that allowed me to open a book again. And it felt like home. So to answer your question of how do you infuse that in life, that's always the question, right? Like I only have so many hours in a day. And here is where I'm a huge believer in the power of these micro steps. So Mike, I have on my website a free gift for this community. Uh, you can even just go to microstepjournal.com. It is the four questions I ask myself every morning. Four questions. It takes under five minutes talking about intentionality before the rest of the world gets a hold of me. me looking at these four questions, writing them down, keeping a promise to myself. Uh, two of them is, well, one is an act of service. What is something I can do for somebody else? And Mike, it can be something as simple as me writing a love letter to my honey by the coffee in the morning. It could be something as simple as texting a friend. It could be sending an email to a colleague saying you killed that presentation last week. One small thing, less than a minute. You show up differently in your day. I promise you that. And then another thing is what is one small thing I can do? One thing that'll make me happy. One thing. Doesn't matter the time. Five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. It just matters the one thing. You make those two promises to yourself. You keep them regardless of what happens in your calendar, right? We're so quick to cancel the thing for us in our right. Herculean sprint of our days, right? You, you do that and I'm telling you, you will get to know yourself and you will show up differently in every area of your life. I love that. And I've been focusing on the second one a lot. Mm. So uh, definitely go check out the free journal at megan-miller.com. And if you don't know what makes you happy, there's the playfulness quiz. Go to playfulhumans.com slash quiz. There's 10 different things that you can do. You answer some fun, like Buzzfeed style questions, and it'll give you an idea. Do you like jokes? Do you like reading and deep thinking? Do you like going outside and exploring? Or do you like being physically active or solving, solving puzzles and, and challenges? It could be anything. There's no right answer there. That's what I love about that. Mm -hmm. It's whatever's right for you. So Megan, I wanted to know for you now that you have 
uh, kind of been on this path for a while. What's the most fun uh, about it? What do you feel like is the part that people leave out when they go, oh, sure, it sounds great, but I have to pay the bills or I wouldn't get to do this or I'm scared of, of this. What do you think is like um, being on the other side of it, something that you don't think people realize or see as possibilities? Uh, I just wrote this down the other day. I was coming back on a flight and I thought I like to use the time when the world can't get a hold of me to like yeah, connect so with good. my thoughts. It's so good. So I'm a huge believer in writing things down for me. It's been like my therapy. There's studies to support that. Do whatever works for you. But for me, just freeing the thoughts in my mind and putting them to pen and paper, not even rereading them has been so therapeutic. And one of the things that I wrote down as a reflection, just even in the past year, Mike, was I wish I would not have been so fearful. I wish I would not have let the asshole in my brain that tells me that you suck, you can't do the thing, no one will listen to you, who do you think you are? I wish I would have not let that paralyze me. And I wish I would have talked back to that more and pushed through the biggest barrier that we all have, which is the conversations up in our brain. And now that I look back on it, I I can see that I had the courage. I always did. I just, it was me versus me. Does that make sense? Yeah, it, I feel like there's always this imposter syndrome. And I was kind of hinting that on your, your natural talents too, that for me, uh, people go, I, I can't imagine getting up on a big stage like that. Um, you mentioned like in front of Billy Idol or Frankie Valley was like 10,000 people and it was a huge audience or even just sales training events with, with 1200 people. And you go, well, that's the fun part for me. I, I did most of that for free. <laughs> and so it's like, that's what I was doing because it was easy. And I think that we don't realize that sometimes when it's easy, we feel like a fraud. We're like, well, this should be harder. This, you know, I, I don't deserve this or other things that we start pulling ourselves back. It's not other people pulling us back and be like, you should really stop. Like somebody needs to take that microphone from you kind of thing. That almost never happens. It's you taking the mic from yourself for the spotlight off of yourself. Yeah. And Mike, Back to those, back to those four, those four questions, the micro step journal, I will tell you the conversations that I had with myself, we are all each other's worst critic. Like, thank God there's not a microphone up here in the mm -hmm. conversations I tell myself, because I want to talk to pe my arch nemesis the way I talk to myself. But I found that when I made the promise to myself, those two things, one act of service, one thing that'll make me happy. And regardless of what happened in my day, regardless of how my day got hijacked, keeping those promises to myself, it changed the conversations in here. Yeah. It's a habit too, right? I think that's what people miss is you can spiral one way or the other. Like if you start leaning towards the shopping and drugs or alcohol or other things to make you happy, you're going to go further down and it's going to make the next day harder once you start making those better choices, like when you go to the gym, right? Nobody wants to go to the gym, but you always feel better leaving it. And then you have a greater chance of going to the gym the next day. But every day you skip, you have a less chance of, of doing it the next day. And I think that's what people miss in um, the hustle culture and stuff is they, they feel like it has to be hard, that it should be a grind and it should get harder as you level up. And I don't think that's true. I think you, it can be easy and you can be successful at the same time. And um, we don't yeah. ever talk about those kind of things in our, our culture. And we also think that it's the big things, right? You're not happy in your job, quit. You don't like the, you're not happy in the relationship, end it. You don't feel good in your, you gained weight, it's the cleanse. You feel like you're drinking too much, it's dry January. I, I hate dry January because guess what happens in February? Everybody hits the bottle harder. <laughs> like you know, at least by St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> at the, at, exactly, and listen, I've had many a good St. Patrick's Day, but I, I, <laughs> I think to your point, Mike, the common denominator in all of it that we never talk about is yourself, and mm. it's these small, to your point, these habits, these behaviors, right? It's these small things that you do every day. It's not the big things. It's the small yeah. thing. So what do I mean by that? It's how you get up in the morning. 
Are you hitting snooze 15 times and getting up late and a tornado through your home? Are you getting up and going right to your social feeds? Which three minutes, Mike, is all it takes. Three minutes of looking at the emails of the social feeds of the news and you'll have a 70 percent higher chance of having a bad day. How are you moving your body? Are you not? What are you eating? Right. Oh, how are you going to bed? What conversations are you having with yourself? All of that. That's the building blocks to your life. It's not the big shit. It's the small little things you do every day. I'm so glad you said that. And you said it a a different way than I normally do. I I think people think about what they want to be when they grow up or what their job is, or they even go the other way, which I feel like puts more pressure on is like, what's your why? What's your purpose Mm. and and stuff. And thinking that there's a right answer to that. And if you just magically find your purpose, your rest of your life is fixed. Doesn't really work for me either. It may work for some people. Uh, But what I'm hearing you say is it's really more about the how, how are you living your life every day? I mean, you can have a really fun, really great, happy, healthy life as any job on the planet with any serving any purpose, but you can also burn yourself out trying to solve like global hunger or, um, you know, global warming and and stuff and just run yourself ragged and be healthy and miserable and feel like you're not making a difference and, and hating your, your life, even with the right mission. So I think a lot more people need to focus on those small things right in front of them, the, uh, the how there, uh, final thoughts here before we play a game, I'll just open it up for you. Anything I should have asked you, or you wanted to to get in before we wrap up. To expand on what you just spoke about, which I, I love that segue into, we expect our jobs to fill all these buckets in our life. No job can do that. No job. So I did this really cool practice, um, and I would recommend your listeners to do this. One morning, robe bound, hair jacked up, teeth on brush before the rest of the world got a hold of me. There's a visual for you. I sat down and I thought to myself, oh, my God, no wonder I feel so depleted. When you look at your life like a six dresser drawer, right, your health, your relationships, financially, self-worth, career, um, what did I miss? Health, finances, self-worth, spirituality, spirituality. What, what do each of those drawers look like? And do they have attention to each of them? Have you sent intention in each of them? Because for me, since career was giving me all the validation, it was the only place I was, I was focusing. I was eating like shit. My relationships were like shit because I wasn't making time for them. I didn't even know what spirituality was. I thought it was sitting in a church pew and that didn't felt, feel right to me. I never got curious about it. Finances were to just shit. So everything else was empty. I'm talking bare bones, but my career drawer was runneth over. So I would ask your listeners to please, if you don't know where to start, if you're like, ah, I don't even know what to do, just sit down, do a quick little drawer of life exercise. Where are you feeling depleted? And what do you want that drawer of your life to look like? And then every day, just make one little promise to that area. Maybe you every Wednesday, you go out with your girlfriends or your friends and you have some wine. Maybe that Wednesday, you only have one glass instead of two. It's these small little things that'll have you showing up differently. I love it. Again, that was Megan Miller. You can find her at megan-miller.com or she was just talking about attention to intention. And that is the name of our podcast. You can find it on iTunes or wherever you're listening to this podcast would be a good start. Search for Megan Miller and putting attention to intention on the podcast. Okay, Megan, are you ready to play a game? I love a game. Yes. All right. Uh, I haven't had anybody say no yet. It's been like a hundred and, you know, 35 episodes or so, Uh, but I always like to get permission. So you got awkward questions. This might get a little weird, uh, but I'm going to ask you some would you rather questions. Um, would you rather change your last name to Pickle or Snodgrass? Pickle. I feel like Pickle's fun. Uh, pickle I would go is kind of fun. It's a great too. it's a great party starter. Now, uh, you have some intention and stuff here. I'm interested to know which way you go on this. A psychic comes up to you and says that you will die in a car crash in the next week. Do you avoid all freeways and automobiles? Oh, 
I got to tell you, I believe in all that shit. So, yes, I would. Yes, I would. I'd be like, thank you for the heads up. And uh, I'll just stay home for the next week. (laughs) I'm more on the no, but I also hate that like self-fulfilling prophecy. And I feel like once it's in your head, like you could make it happen. So I think I probably would as well. Uh, Okay, now here's the fun one. Uh, We're pushing the last one. We're pushing (laughs) the, uh, the comfort zone here. Which contest would you be most likely to win a wet t-shirt contest or a bake-off? Oh, God. That <laughs> is a lose-lose. I have, I am, I, I don't have either. I have no baking skills and I got nothing up top. I'm going to go with, oh, God, you know what? I, uh, baking, baking. I would cheat somehow, some way. Yeah, find a good recipe, get some help. <laughs> Something you can do there. I tap uh, somebody in. I'd be like, you gotta help me here. I thought that was fun. Um, obviously, I'm gonna have to give a big off as well. <laughs> Nobody wants to see that. Uh, all right. Uh, you win. So I appreciate you playing along. The podcast is yours. Anything we can do to help you or you help us. What do you think? Mm, I have to tell you, Mike. I, as I, as I told you before we hit record, I just think there is so much value in this community that you're building to have fun, to have people share their stories. I think there's so much power in knowing wherever you are in your journey, you're not alone. And, um, I just want to tell you, I love, I just, I love the work you do. And I love, I love how you're having fun. Let's just have fun. When did shit have to become so hard and serious? So I thank you. Uh, thank you for sharing your uh, time and attention with us. I thought it was really great stuff today. So uh, again, check out Megan-Miller.com for more information. She does coaching. She does speaking. There's all kinds of cool stuff. And don't forget to grab that free micro journal and do those quick exercises this week. If you are having fun with this and you enjoyed the podcast, share it with somebody else that you think needs to hear it. I think that's the best way to help us out and to uh, check out the sponsors as well. Playfulhumans.com slash sponsors. All kinds of cool stuff up there to help you along your journey as well. Until next time, go play, everybody. Don't wait for tomorrow. Live for today. Keep on chasing the sunshine. Hey, you did it. You made it to the end, but don't worry. There are plenty of more videos where that came from. Just click subscribe to Playful Humans to get notified about our future videos. Now, what are you still doing here? Go play.